So phylum Porifera is also known as Parazoa. Porifera is a combination of two Greek words. The first word is porous, that means pore, and the second word is peri, that means to bear. So Porifera means pore bearing animals. They are also commonly known as sponges. These are the first and the lowest multicellular animals. I hope you can recall that the animals of phylum Protozoa were unicellular animals. Poriferans exhibit cellular level of body organization. Various minute pores due to which they have obtained their name are known as ostia and are found on their body walls. Around 5000 species of the phylum Porifera are known till date. Now let's have a look at some of the general characteristics of this phylum. All the animals of this phylum are aquatic, sedentary or sessile, asymmetrical or radially symmetrical animals. Bilateral symmetry is not found in them. The sponges are diploblastic in nature. The actoderm is composed of pinacocytes and endoderm is composed of coanocytes. Therefore, these layers are also known as pinacoderm and coanoderm respectively. The body is perforated by numerous minute pores called ostia through which a continuous current of outside water is taken inside the body. These ostia open into a large central cavity which is known as spongocele. The spongocele opens to the outside by means of a large opening known as osculum. The most characteristic feature of this phylum is the presence of an intercommunicating system of cavities which is known as the canal system. They consist of an endoskeleton made up of calcareous spicules or siliceous spicules or spongin fibers or sometimes the endoskeleton is altogether absent. There are no specialized organs for excretion and respiration. They take place by diffusion through general body surface. Sponges exhibit a great power of regeneration. The reproduction takes place both by asexual and sexual methods. In case of asexual reproduction, the reproductive bodies are known as gametes. The development is direct or indirect. In case of indirect development, it takes place through larva, which are commonly parenchymula, amphiblastula, etc. This cross sectional diagram explains the general structure of a poriferin or a sponge. As we can see, this is the osculum, that is the opening of the cavity called spongocele present in the sponge. Then there are coanocytes, or also known as collar cells, which are flagellated cells which line the spongocele. Then we have the spicules, which form the endoskeleton of the sponge. Then there is this atrium, that is the inner portion. And then we have these porocytes. These are the cells which surround the pores or the ostia present in the sponge. Mesohyle is the acellular portion of the body. Then we have these cells called amoebocytes present in the mesohyle. These collar cells or the coanocytes capture the food which enters with the water current in this cavity. But they pass this food uh, to the amoebocyte cells present in the mesohyle. These amoebocytes then carry that food to the other cells in the body which require nutrition. Therefore, they somehow compensate for the absence of a proper circulation system in the sponge. Then we have these pinacocytes, which are the cells which form the aptoderm, which is also known as pinacoderm of the body. As we discussed earlier, that the most important characteristic of the phylum Porifera is the presence of canal system. Now, canal system is basically of three types: ascon type, sycon type, and leucon type. These three are the main types of canal systems. We are going to discuss. The basic idea behind each type, one by one. The first type of canal system is the Ascon type, which is the simplest type. The water enters through incurrent pores into the spongocele or the paragastric cavity and then moves out through the opening of the spongocele that is known as osculum. Eucosolalia is its example, which consists of ascon type of canal system. 
The second type of the canal system is Sycan type, whose example is Sycan. In this canal system, the body wall is further folded. Therefore, when water first enters into the incurrent canal, then it enters the flagellated canals, which is formed by further folding of the body wall. The coenocytes that are the flagellated collar cells, they are limited only to the flagellated canals, and therefore these canals are known as flagellated canals. The water then enters the sponge seal and from where it leaves the sponge body through the opening of the sponge seal, which is known as osculum. The next type of the canal system is the leucon type, which is found in the members of the class Demospongia of Phylum Porifera. In this type, the body wall gets further folded, due to which excurrent canals also appear. The water first enters the incurrent canal, then it enters the flagellated chambers, that is those canals which are lined by guanocytes, that is flagellated uh, collar cells. From there, the water enters the excurrent canals, which combine to form the spongocele, but spongocele is largely obliterated. Then from spongocele, the water leaves through the opening of the spongocele, which is known as osculum. Phylum porifera has been further classified into three classes. Calcarea, Hexactinalida, and Demospongia. Let us see what are their important characteristics. 